Coming up on Mountain News this morning, we continue to learn about the life of a fallen West Virginia state trooper and the legacy he leaves behind. And an annual outdoor event is held to honor a fallen Kentucky police officer who was killed while on the job. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfee. The time is now 6.02 on this Monday morning. Now let's check in with Brandon Robinson for a look at your forecast this morning. Now, Brandon, we're supposed to have a pretty nice day today. I haven't looked outside. I'm not sure if the sun's already rising yet or not, but I'd say it'll be a pretty nice morning. It is in some areas. It's a very mild morning, but it's also a very foggy morning yes, for some. For so sure. if you looked out the door here in Hazard, you would see no fog or see no sun. You would just see fog. Yeah. But in other places across the area, like the I-75 corridor down toward London Corbin, Corbin's seeing a few clouds out there. It's starting to lighten up just a little bit. 63 this morning, so it'll be a mix of sun and clouds for most of today. Temperatures very mild out there. I'll tell you the spots that are in the 50s. 58 Irvin, Ashland, 59 Somerset, 57 Wise, 56 Clintwood. Everybody else is in the 60s this morning. Actually, I, I just noticed Williamsburg's down to 59, so there you go. 68 Monticello and 66 in Jackson, two of the warmer spots out there today. So for today's breakdown, it is going to be a fairly nice day, very warm day, too. 85 out there, spotty chance for a shower storm, just like the last couple of days. We had uh, some storms in Pike County and Letcher County on Saturday. We had some storms in Harlan and Bell Counties yesterday. Not a widespread thing, but again, the best chances will be in the heat of the day this afternoon. Olivia. All right, Brandon, thank you. We're learning more about a West Virginia state trooper killed in the line of duty in Mingo County on Friday. Sergeant Maynard graduated from Belfry High School in 2003. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox talked with some members of the Belfry community about his impact on their lives. Before Corey Maynard became a police officer, he was a student at Belfry High School. Went to homeroom twice. So I got to know my kids a lot better. Um, so yeah, I had him in homeroom, got to see him in the morning and the afternoon. Casey described Maynard as someone that was always ready to greet you. I always remember Corey, you know, I mean, even, I mean, I don't know, I just remember him. It, nothing stood out. It was just, he was always friendly and you could always count on him to say hi to you. Even after graduating from Belfry, Maynard remained friends with many in the area. Longtime friend Tina Steele Todd told WYMT he was someone you could count on from childhood through adulthood, and he always stood behind his badge. His death has left many heartbroken. If you're in this long enough, you see a lot of your former students pass away, and it was really weird. I really honestly just saw Corey about two weeks ago. I saw him in, at Walmart, I think, and I don't know. It was As soon as I heard this yesterday, I remember seeing him. Corey Maynard's legacy of service to the community will be forever remembered. In Belfry, Chandler Wilcox, WIMT Mountain News. Sergeant Maynard leaves behind his wife and two children who were 9 and 13. West Virginia Governor Jim Justice signed the Cassie Johnson Memorial Act into law. This sets forth a 15 to life sentence for someone convicted of obstruction leading to the death of a first responder. It went into effect on Sunday. Suspected murderer Tim Timothy Kennedy could be eligible for the same sentence if he is convicted of first degree murder of Sergeant Maynard. On Saturday, Governor Andy Bashir tweeted out his condolences for everyone impacted by Maynard's death, saying, quote, I was heartbroken to hear that West Virginia State Police Sergeant Corey Maynard was tragically killed last night while protecting his community. He was a hero who sacrificed everything to make our community safer. Sergeant Maynard was from Pike County here in Kentucky, and his loss is felt by so many. I ask all of the Commonwealth to join Brittany and me in praying for his family, fellow law enforcement officers, and all of West Virginia, end quote. It was one of Louisville's greatest tragedies, a mass shooting at Old National Bank. Five people lost their lives and several others were injured, including LMPD officer Nicholas Wilt. But from the horror, 
A story of inspiration as an injured officer shows the world what he's made of. Wilt was shot in the head on April 10th. He spent weeks recovering at University Hospital before being transferred to a rehab facility. In an interview with our Louisville sister station Wave, members of Wilt's family talked about how proud they are of him. There's all kinds of things he could have done. He could have been a pharmacist and hid behind a desk the rest of his life somewhere, and I wouldn't have had to worry, but you just never know anymore nowadays anyway. So I'm glad he was doing what he wanted to do, and that gives me a lot of satisfaction. Wilt's family says he's had serious ups and downs since he was shot, but he can now communicate and even get on a treadmill. They say they are starting to see his personality peek through. There continues to be a massive show of support for an officer lo lost in the line of duty. The sixth annual golf scramble for LMPD's Nick Rodman was held during the weekend. In 2017, Rodman responded to a shots fired call and ended up getting into a chase with the suspect. At some point, they crashed into Rod's, Rodman's cruiser. He died in the hospital. Every since his death, the annual Nick Rodman Memorial Golf Scramble has raised money for LMPD's Wellness Center and their Officer in Distress Fund. And this year's crowd was the biggest ever. Rodman's wife talked about how they, how his loved ones continue to use his legacy to help other officers who are struggling. It's been very hard. I mean, it's been six years. It's still really hard, but there's really nothing we can do about it. We got to find ways to keep moving forward in life. It's just really a blessing to see. Like I said, it's very bittersweet. It's sad, but to see all these people come together, it's just kind of a beautiful thing. The Nick Rodman Foundation has already raised $50,000 this year, and that's not even counting this year's scramble. And we've also seen a large show of support from people across the Commonwealth for the family of fallen Scott County Deputy Caleb Conley. Now a business in his hometown of Cynthiana is working to pay tribute to Deputy Conley. Assistant Chief Robert Peake's wife owns the Next Chapter Bookstore, and together they are working on a gift for his family, a book full of memories about the father, husband, and friend. A reminder of the positive impact he had on those who knew him. Once we uh, get it complete and everyone's had an opportunity to uh, share their thoughts and their feelings, and it will it'll be something private and something that they that his family will hold on to and, and cherish for many years to come. But the book isn't only for Deputy Conley's brothers and sisters in blue. Anyone is welcome to come into the store and write an entry about him and the hero he was. Visibility is still a bit rough this morning, so continue to be careful if you're traveling in some areas right now. We're looking at anything less than five miles, which includes Hazard, Logan, Wise, Jonesville, Harlan, and Middlesbrough on our airport map, and several lo other locations in those counties that we just mentioned. Uh, seeing some dense fog, so continue to be careful. Looks like southwest Virginia, most counties over that way that we cover being affected in parts of East Tennessee, southeast Kentucky, and again back into eastern Kentucky just a little bit. We also have some fog in Pikeville, even though the airport not showing that Lake Cumberland not looking terrible this morning, but you can kind of tell a little bit of a maybe foggy haze down that way in Pulaski County right now. We take a look at our temperatures, 50s and 60s out there, very, very mild, 56 in Clintwood is the cold spot, 68 in Monticello, the warm spot. So your 12 hour planner today, we're going to start to warm up pretty quickly. Spotty, a spotty chance for a passing shower or storm this afternoon can't be ruled out in the heat of the day. The models trying to keep it out to the west, but we're just going to have to kind of keep an eye and see where it develops at this afternoon because it's popped up in a couple of different places along the Kentucky and Virginia borders the last couple of days. We'll keep you posted. 85, your official forecast high. Olivia. Thank you, Brandon, and thanks for joining Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. Coming up, we learn more about an explosive sound that rattled the nation's capital and the situation that caused it to happen. That's on the way next.